Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV bringing you all another Market Watch episode. So obviously today we are talking about some card prices and changes that happened as a direct result of the May 2022 ban list. This was a pretty big one with more than 20 cards moving positions on the list. So today we're going to focus on some of the cards that were actually on the list itself. And then in the next Market Watch episode, we're going to talk about some cards that weren't necessarily on the list, but moved as a direct result of it. Let's get started. So we are going to start off with the change that I think is the most surprising one from this list, and that is with Change of Heart going from banned to limited status. So Change of Heart has been banned ever since 2005. I don't think anyone ever really expected this card to come off the list. Remember a few years ago when Snatch Steel went to one out of nowhere? It was banned pretty quickly after that, everyone thought it was kind of ridiculous. However, I think that Change of Heart feels like a crazy card, but in the context of today's game, it isn't really that broken. We have Mind Control at 3, it doesn't really see any play at all, with the main difference being that you can attack with the monster you steal with Change of Heart, that probably isn't a huge deal either. And remember, you have something like Triple Tactics Talents, where you can still take your opponent's monster, but you have a little bit more flexibility because the card can also do other things. I don't know, it's kind of crazy to think that this card is back in the game, but at the same time, remember that we have cards like BLS and Raigeki at 3, and those cards were really, really impactful and powerful before, but in the context of today's game, they aren't really doing anything. I think Change of Heart will ultimately go the same way. However, of course, that isn't going to stop the market from completely freaking out and buying out all copies of Change of Heart that are available on the market. There are several different printings, but most of them are quite old. First up, we have the Legendary Collection Yugi's World Secret Rares. Unlimiteds are currently around 80, but I think First Eds are actually between 120 to 150 or something like that. We have the MRD Ultra Rares, which is the original printing, where the Unlimiteds are about 50, but the First Eds are $500, something crazy like that. I don't think too many of those are even available on the market, so take that with a grain of salt. They are crazy hard to find, especially in near mint condition. There is also a DB1 Ultra. Those are a bit more expensive because they're from a hard to find side set. Those are gonna cost you about $90 a piece. And then there are also a few different common and rare printings plus the Starfoil printing from a battle pack. All of these lower rarity versions are gonna cost you anywhere from 10 to $30 depending on the printing and of course the card's condition. So overall, really cool to see Change of Heart come back, especially since I think most people assumed that it was never going to, so everyone's kind of freaking out and just panic buying their copies. I don't know, I have like a bunch of extra copies just sitting around in a band box that I have. I'm probably gonna give like a few extra copies to my friend group at Locals so that they all have access to it after I've sold my higher rarity copies at least. Uh, if you guys do have some extra copies of this card, I'm definitely going to recommend offloading them while this initial ban list hype is here since I don't think that the card is actually going to make much of an impact on the meta and the card will probably get a reprint sometime soon anyways to make it more accessible to the player base. Up next is another card that has been banned forever, we have Yadagarasu. So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, this is a spirit monster that stops your opponent from drawing for turn if it inflicts battle damage to your opponent. Now back in the day, you could use Chaos Emperor Dragon to send everything from both players' hands and fields to the graveyard, including a copy of Sangan or Witch of the Black Forest. Then search for Yadagarasu, summon it, attack your opponent, and prevent them from being able to do anything. Honestly, this is a pretty iconic card, so it makes sense why Konami has been scared to bring it back for so long, but really, I don't think it's that great of a card to be honest. In today's game, so many decks have access to entire graveyards that they can play out of as resources, where you don't even need to be able to draw for a turn and you'll still be fine. And really, what deck is going to be able to abuse something like this consistently? I think the only thing I can think of that even comes close to being able to abuse Yadagarasu is like Shino Birds. I bet half of you watching this don't even know what that archetype is. Anyways, Yadagarasu was last printed in 2009, so it's quite an old card, especially since it's been banned for so long. We have two different common printings of the card. Either one is going to cost you about $15 at the moment. Not too bad, but still a significant price bump up from where it was before. The only hollow version of the card is the original secret rare printing from Legacy of Darkness. Unlimiteds are going to be about $100, and the first edition copies are about $200. If you guys own the secret rare printing, I think it's honestly just more of a collectible card at this point. The unbanning of it probably didn't affect the demand of this card too much, since no one's really wanting to like pick it up to play it, right? 
Rather, it's the common version that people will look to pick up for fun and try to use, and that's I think why we've seen it jump up to that $15 mark for either common version of the card. I think that this is another card to offload fresh off of the ban list really honestly. It's just not that strong in the context of today's game either. Realistically, this card's going to get a super rare printing in an upcoming OTS tournament pack. The commons are going to go back down to their pre unbanning value, and this card will just be remembered as another old card that was really iconic before but is completely power crept out of the current format. Another previously banned card here, we have Performa Pal Monkey Board. So Pendulums obviously aren't that crazy of a deck right now, they've definitely lost a lot ever since Electromite got banned and they really haven't been the same deck ever since. Sure they top occasionally every now and then, but they're never anything like super consistent. However, in Dimension Force they do get a neat tool in the form of Beyond the Pendulum, which is almost like a watered down Electromite replacement. While Monkey Board is another tool for Pendulum strategies to get back, Monkey Board is effectively just a one card complete scale as you can activate it to search for a level four or lower Performapal monster from your deck. This could either be a scale, or you could search a copy of Skullcrabat Joker, who in turn can search you that scale and set up your Pendulum Summon for free. With Skullcrabat Joker at 3, this card is quite easy to access, so definitely a useful tool for the deck to have access to, even though they probably still aren't the strongest deck. However, Monkey Board was only in the game for a relatively short time back in the day. I think it was Emergency Limited pretty shortly after its release, and then it was banned soon after that. Monkey Board does just have two printings, the original, which is the common version, which is only like a dollar or so, and then the super rare printing from OTS Tournament Pack 1. Now because Pendulums aren't super popular or viable, and since Monkey Board is just a one of for whatever deck you're playing, this card maintains a relatively manageable price point of $8 for the super rare, the commons are still probably only going to be like 50 cents or so. I am looking forward to seeing what Pendulums can do with this new unbanning of Monkey Board and the new Performapal support in Dimension Force so at the very least, you will want to own a common copy of this card to play Pendulums with. The last card here that went from banned to limited that we're going to talk about today is Jet Synchron. So this one is pretty interesting since we still have Crystron Halky Fibrax in the game today. Jet Synchron is one of those casualties of Halk because you can summon it out of the deck with Halk's effect, but then it actually provides two bodies to link or synchro with instead of just one, since you can revive it from the graveyard quite easily. However, with Auroradon gone, I think it's a bit harder to see a place for Jet Synchron in the game where you can really abuse it. Also, there is the fact that you have to send a card from your hand to the graveyard in order to revive the Jet Synchron, so it's not as free as some of the other targets in the game that are still banned, like Blow Up Bulb or Steam the Cloak. I'm sure that someone will still find a way to use Jet Synchron in something. Maybe it'll be used in like the Tenyi Adventurer deck or based or something like that. So Jet Synchron does just have the one hollow printing. It is a structure deck super rare and those copies are going to cost you about $8 each. I think the thing about Jet Synchron is that no one thought that it was actually going to come back, especially not this soon. So people probably dumped super rare Jet Synchrons as bulk and now they just don't have them available, which is why this price has spiked so much. Fortunately, the card does have two common printings from OTS Tournament Pack 9 and Legendary Duelist Magical Hero. So if you do need a copy of this card to play with, you have those available to you. This card is probably just going to be a one of brick for those of you that are actually probably going to use this card. So if I were you guys, I would sell off the supers to anyone who's willing to pay up for them and just be content with using the much more affordable common versions that you can still probably dig up from your local store's bulk. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting one. We are moving on to Pot of Desires. So I say interesting because I feel like this card didn't really need to go to one in the first place. At least when it was at three, you could get punished by drawing into additional copies of Desire off of Desires and everyone was running Ash Blossom anyways and you usually dropped Ash on the Desires. However, with Desires at 1, this just felt like a really big sat card. I'm playing Sword Soul Tenyi and I draw Desires a lot when it's at 1. So trust me, I know just how sacky it feels. My opponents are probably even saltier. However, this card being at 2 is like Konami telling us that we should have been running the card at 2 all along, right? Now obviously I'm kidding, but yeah, so Desires is a card that's definitely going to continue to be a staple. For those decks that run lots of main deck cards in multiples and don't mind banishing a couple pieces from their main deck, so things like Sword Soul for sure, who knows what other decks will adopt this card moving forward now that it's at 2. However, Desires is such a generic staple type of card that all versions have gone up in price since the card went from 1 to 2. 
The ultimate rares are really, really beautiful. Uh, those are currently sitting at about $90 a piece. I do believe there was an issue with that set though, OTS Tournament Pack 11 or something. Um, there was like a story about them being stolen, there being a surplus of them dumped onto the market, which is why they're so cheap relative to other good staple ultimate rares. Don't quote me on that, that's just what I've heard. So if you are going to buy ultimate rare copies of Desires, uh, you know, be a little bit careful there in terms of what price point you're buying them at. There is a collector's rare version from Toon Chaos. Unlimiteds are about 100 and then first eds are about 150. Uh, we have the secret rares from the Dark Illusion. They're another cool rarity. That's my favorite rarity personally that I'm playing with. You're looking at $30 for unlimiteds and $40 for first eds. Ultras are the budget holo version. These were Megaton promos that used to only be a dollar or so, but those are actually now back up to $5 each. And then from there, we have the much more easily accessible lower rarity versions, right? The commons, the rares from various sets or structure decks that are about a dollar each. It's up to you guys, whatever rarity you want to play. Personally, I really like the secrets because I think they're really nice, but they're not really, really expensive, right? It's kind of like a trade off there. However, I will definitely recommend just going ahead and picking up three copies of this card rather than two for whatever rarity you decide to get, since I think there is a decent chance that we will see desires go back to three within the next couple of ban lists, which is going to cause the card to jump in price yet again. You may as well just be a little bit more prepared and own a set of this card for now, while the card is still technically semi-limited at two. Another semi-limited card here, we have Fire Formation Tanky. This is a pretty cool one, though I think it kind of felt before like it was unnecessary when they also banned Dryden for the second time. Really, this just gives an extra searcher back to Tri Brigades, which are now basically playing an extra copy of Fractal. However, the deck did get a lot less powerful without access to Verte Anaconda to help them make Mirror Jade or DPE, so I think the deck still won't be too relevant. Maybe there's someone who's going to make Tri Brigade Liralesque relevant again, who knows? Anyways, Tenki is a card that has a ton of lower rarity printings, right? So commons, supers, we aren't going to worry about those. However, the card does have two higher rarity versions that are definitely worth paying attention to. Those are the ultimate and secret rares. The ultis are actually really amazingly beautiful. They are going to cost you, though, anywhere from $120 to $150. So if you do have the money to spend, they might be nice to own if you want to go that route. However, I think the other rarity that's really nice that isn't appreciated nearly enough is the secret rare version. There are two different secret rare printings of Tanky, one from Fist of the Gadgets, another secret rare speed dual version. Either one of those is going to cost you about $5 a piece and they look really amazing. So just like Desires, right? Whatever version you decide to pick up, definitely consider grabbing an entire set because I could definitely see Tanky going back to three within the next couple of lists. So it might just be easier to hold on to your sets now just in case. And finally, the last card we're looking at for today is Cyber Angel Benton. Benton is a ritual monster well known because of the Drytron deck, though to be fair, I think people didn't really start summoning it until it was limited to one and they had to summon it back. Benton was useful because you could search out cards like Vanity's Ruler, Eva, and Herald of Ultimateness, all of which are very annoying cards for your opponent to have to deal with. Now, however, Eva is currently banned, and so Drytrons are unable to abuse it to search for a ton of negates for the Herald. With Eva Band and Benton Limited, Drytrons have really underperformed over the last little while, not really seeing any competitive success at all. That being said, I don't think that Ben 10 is a ridiculously big boost going back to 2, but it does help to make them a bit more consistent, I suppose. They are probably still not going to go back to being top tier or anything like that, but they will be an interesting, more rogue sort of strategy. Benton isn't too pricey because it does have a couple of common printings that are fairly cheap. However, do keep in mind that the original secret rares from Dragons of Legend, uh, they are the highest rarity version. They are back up to $18 each with extremely few copies available on TCG Player. Aside from that, the only other hollow is the super rare version. Those are only like a dollar or two. So yeah, if you guys are big on Drytron, then maybe you still have an extra secret lying around somewhere. Or if you picked up secret rares because they were cheap while the card was limited, then maybe now you can offload them if you aren't really that big on the deck. Either way, I think we can all expect people to kind of forget about Benton going back to two after a couple of months, to be honest, since the deck probably still won't be doing anything in terms of meta relevance. So if you do need it, you are probably better off picking up the lower rarity version for now. And then if you really want to bling out your Drytrons, pick up a secret copy down the road after the hype has calmed down and you can get them at a much cheaper price. 
All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. I know I'm still caught off guard by a bunch of things that happened on the list. Some of it was easy to see coming, right? Like the Verte ban, but other things were impossible to see coming out of nowhere, like the change of heart and the Yadagarasu. Either way, I'm definitely excited to see what new stuff people are going to come up with in light of these most recent changes. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch, make sure you let me know by slamming that thumbs up button for me. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the changes on the ban list, about how the market has reacted as a result, and what other cards are currently trending so I can potentially cover those in a future episode. Also, if you haven't already, do make sure you hit that subscribe button to get all of the latest and greatest content from both Tom Box and myself here on the channel. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.